We have uh, a different topic now. I'd love to welcome uh, the head of operations, I suppose, in of the fire service in Scariff, uh, Darren McNamara. Darren, you're very welcome. Good morning, fellas. Morning, I just, Darren. It was, it was just when, when Ruth and uh, Owen were going out there, of course, you have a strong connection with the musical uh, society, haven't you? You were, you were over that for some time. I was, Maybe uh, you still are. No, 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 to be honest. Um, I had to step down, believe it or not, uh, at the last AGM. Um, just, just personal reasons. I I'm, um, I'm took on the project of building a house. Yes. And uh, well, it is in Caramore, no in less. Caramore, yeah, yeah. gone out to the, the rich people, John. Yeah, out, uh, the, the rich people that live oh, in yes. Caramore. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. upwardly mobile. <laughs> he's still looking down on me. As well, but, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it's while while building is all singing and dancing. Um, it's it's a different type of singing. And dancing, oh, God, it is. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's just it, when you go self building, it's a massive commitment. It is, uh, and I, stressful, and and everything. It sure is. I mean, lots of people have done it. Yeah, I'm lucky enough, I suppose. I'm not too excitable at times um, family will probably disagree with that but, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah it is uh, I've, I'm lucky enough I have a good circle of friends uh, a lot of people involved um, yes. so I have a lot of phone numbers a lot of people to lean on so, yes yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and getting good advice and then you go to the pub at night and you get better advice <laughs> so, uh, this is what you should have done <laughs> yeah yeah. Well, had, you, had you any difficulty getting uh, planning permission I had to be honest yeah um, a big thing with the Clare County Council, it seems to be your previous locations and addresses and, yeah. and proof of that. Um, I found it a little strange, I suppose, because I work for the council. Yeah. And they're looking for proof. And I'm kind of going, I have a contract with you. Yeah. Uh, maybe look at the address in that. <laughs> and they're kind of going, well, that's not one we accept. And I was kind of going, well, maybe that's one you should accept. <laughs> yes. But, uh, yeah, I had difficulty. I, I was nearly three years. Um, Are you serious? Yeah, yeah. Um, design of the house, I suppose, will always be, uh, I suppose, an issue. Yeah. Um, again, I suppose, I found, they give me a big folder at the start, and it kind of says, in keeping with the area and views and all that, and I, I suppose I'm not, anyway, educated in that. I, th- I done my best yeah. and I looked at the houses around and I kind of took a design off them and I went with that kind of shape and size yeah. and we went through a process of about 13 or 14 months with that design Yeah. and uh, to discover after all that time that's not the design they wanted. Why they couldn't say that was the first time? Hey, that's what I was just <laughs> thinking. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, she let me off. Uh, it was a female planner and she let me off with the with the design, and we kept changing things and changing windows and yes, changing yes. Um, textures in the house and changing the angle of the house and up and down and over and back, and we did a full jig all the way around the site and after four sets of drawings, discovered that's not the house she wanted. And I was kind of going, fair enough. Yes. Thank you for the 13 months of wasted You held time. back. I did. No, I, I suppose I don't know. Planning, and it's only my opinion, but planning is an opinion. Yes, and, indeed. And yeah. I think it just depends on who you get. Yeah. yeah. So I suppose you know the area. Like there's a big two-story house right next door to my site, and I was um, I was trying to kind of mimic something like that, and then it just didn't work out. I said about 13, 14 months afterwards, I just I was kind of getting a little frustrated, and I said, just send me what it is. drawings of something you believe will work, and uh, she sent us four different drawings. Two of them are very similar to what we sat down originally with. And then when I read the folder, we kind of changed our original drawings to what we thought would suit the area. So we kind of wound up with initially what we wanted, uh, even though it took... It took, went the long <laughs> way around. Went the long way around, yeah. I definitely took the, the, the touristy route to it, yeah, yeah. But you're, I, you're happy now, I mean... Ah, very much, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah it is. It is. It, it's like Anthem, once you see progress, it, yes. it's, it's good. Um, so uh, when are you promising yourself entry? Um, I haven't, and it's it's probably the most common question. I haven't because we had deadlines to start, yeah. and I suppose when that keeps getting knocked back, there's a disappointment, and there's a bit of maybe a small bit of anger and frustration. And yeah. So once we got going, we said, listen, let's see where it goes. Um, I would like maybe at the end of the summer, shoving, definitely in by Christmas. So yeah. that's 
Yeah. We'll we'll turn up for the, <laughs> the housewarming. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, get to know the neighbours. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we we didn't bring you in. To talk no, I'm not talking about building. I'm not an expert in that. Because, uh, now the topic we're about started, but a uh, small yeah. bit of knowledge on it. Yeah. Well, I saw, yeah. what's your title in the in the fire service? So Scarif? we're classed as station officers. Is it would be our our title. Um, so I suppose where the station officer is, we'd be in charge of the outer stations outside of the. The, the main station. Hmm. And what we'll say, just to give us a, a quick sketch maybe of how many people you have working in Scarif, how much equipment you have, etc. Um, yeah, we'll be here all day <laughs> if I mention the equipment. Um, so we have a crew of 10. 10 is a full crew. Um, the, the National Directorate for, it kind of goes in numbers and calls. So that's how they work out how many people you need. So the National um, numbers for a station of scarf size would be nine. Um, a lot of counties would follow that. In Clare, we're quite lucky in that they've given an extra person to all that number of stations. So we would have 10. Out of that 10, seven have to be on call at all times. And when I say on call, we were restricted to a mile and a half of the station. So work or live within a mile and a half of the station when, when mm. you're on call. That's fairly demanding, isn't it? It is quite a demanding, yeah. It is, it's a big commitment. Um, to be fair, the rewards outweigh it, um, but times are changing. And unfortunately, I suppose the, the laws or the, the, I don't know what you'd say, whatever the restrictions that with it didn't go with time. Um, 30 years ago, this was perfect. Um, a lot of lads would be working in the factory. The factory would give permission for guys to, to respond to calls. They were living in the town. Uh, times were different. There was maybe one car house. Kids would go hurling, that's it. Uh, whereas nowadays, there's, as you know, kids are going everywhere. Uh, there's two or three cars in every house. Uh, a lot of people are going places. They're busier. Both parents <laughs> working. So it's hard to get someone to commit to that now. Uh, we're looking after the boys that are in it. Most of them self-employed. Um, settled, have houses, have children. So they're around. The, the, maybe the travelling bug has gone off them. But uh, it is very restrictive. It is, hmm. yeah, yeah. And, and how many, you have a, a number of fire tenders there. Yes, uh, so in Scarf again, uh, Clare, I suppose what some people don't realise is we're, we're very lucky in the management in Clare. Uh, Tom Burke, to mention Tom, Tom started in Limerick and came to Clare and one thing Tom likes is enough of the best. So in Scarf, uh, for a crew of 10, we have two fire appliances, we call them. So you'll have to give the terminology. Um, so fire trucks, so we have two of them but we're classed as a one pump station. So one pump station should be one pump, but I uh, said in Clare, they like to have, um, they've got funding for it. It comes from the national directorate and we're well equipped. So we have two fire appliances, a uh, crew of six in each. Uh, we have a tanker then. So if God forbid we had fires outside of anywhere where there's locally sourced water, uh, we can bring 10,000 liters of water with us. And we'd also have a 4x4, four four, which is a, a van for carrying equipment and special um, access and egress from areas. So that's kind of the mechanical vehicles. And outside of that, then, sure, there's just loads of... Everyone knows the lathers. Everyone sees lathers. It's all different sizes of lathers. We have pumps. We have equipment for cars, uh, crashes. Big thing at the moment is um, health and safety has gone really big in the last number of years so we've road traffic management is, is a lot of calls we get now so we have the bothers and the cones and the stop and go which is kind of new enough so years ago it would be literally as the name suggests fire fire chimney yeah. fires house fires yeah pretty much um, when i joined um you had to do a bit of study for your interview you know and uh, so we would have asked what the predominant cause were and at that time for the area scarf it would have been chimney fires and gorse fires, forestry fires, because there's a lot of boggish area around. Uh, so that would have made up the majority of their calls. And I'm in it since 2008, so there's massive change since then. Uh, like when you talk of equipment, our medical bag would be, back when I joined, was the size of yeah. a handbag. Dan, uh, looking back over your years of involvement, does any f particular incident stand out? Now, you needn't mention names or anything, but... But the yeah, I suppose uh, the, the f I was about to say the funny one. There's nothing funny about it. Um, 
I was traveling a bit and I, I was kind of over and back to Dubai and I was in and out and I was I was young and giddy I suppose and, and hadn't really planned on settling but I was home for a period it was just after Evan got married and I was home in the bar and I got approached to join the fire service and I had no great interest to be honest um, but they stayed at me and I applied and I got it and I went in and I suppose I went in a little blind I wasn't maybe as motivated to be in the fire service as I should have been at the time and when you ask about a particular call, um, I missed my first two calls. Maybe I shouldn't say that in air, but I did. <laughs> um, and the third call that I, I was actually on the books for um, was, it came in as a house fire with persons reported would be our terminology, so that means there was people involved. And I landed on. Boots were shiny, gear was shiny, helmet was shiny, and I was really eager. And I was running around the house, I uh, didn't really know what I was doing, but I was running around the house. I looked busy, but I remember distinctly that this call was the one that it genuinely changed my life and, and the way I think about my life. Uh, there was two kids. Now, there was no fire. We discovered that afterwards. But all the experienced guys knew there was no fire. I didn't. So I was running around the house as if there was a fire. And I was checking everything and I was looking. But there was two kids at the bottom of the stairs. And every time I passed, it was just the way they looked at me. And I didn't understand it at the time. <coughs> Excuse me. So after then we, we discovered that it was the oil boiler outside had gone low on oil and was puffing smoke because it was burning okay. dirt and it filled the house with smoke. But two days later, uh, I'm standing on the street and these two young fellas were across the street by Longs and I just heard this big beckoning of a salute. And I remember it turned and just the joy that was on them and the admiration that... Yeah. And it, it genuinely, I remember it was kind of that light bulb moment that happens yeah. in your life. And I was kind of going, I'm really making a difference. And that made a difference to their lives. And that family subsequently moved away. They were involved in the factory. But any time I met them two kids after, it was just the, the smile on their oh, face and the admiration. Lovely. And it, it did. It really kind of, I suppose, brought me into adulthood mm -hmm. where it caught me on a small bit, you know. And to tell me, uh, that's, a, that's a lovely story. Mm -hmm. uh, the... Danger, I mean, the most dangerous thing that you have actually confronted, without naming any. Yeah, or without admitting what we do on air. <laughs> <laughs> um. That's just between ourselves here. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. This isn't live, is it? Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> we're editing this. Um, yeah, I suppose there's a, there's a saying there, uh, the fire brigade is called when nobody else can do it. Yes. Um, so our repertoire of skills is slightly, puts us slightly outside the remit of what other people are allowed to. Um, have been in a few hairy moments. Um, have you? Yeah. When you're up on top of uh, mountain fires, come yeah. to mind, um, with a breeze, uh, the fire travels quite quickly, and particularly in the drier months, mm. and it skips. And for some strange reason, up on top of the mountain here, the wind can change literally in seconds. Um, we were up just above um, Baha Bog yeah. all of us inside nice and relaxed fire was burning up to us we wanted it to burn up to us where we were going to deal with it and it was coming up the side of a mountain really really slowly because the wind was but once it hit the top it totally flipped around and just for that few minutes you're trapped because the fire has now changed and now it's coming at us and there's fire behind us and uh, it, it puts you thinking for a little moment like the fire, the fire belt was maybe 12, 13 feet wide and it's just that bit too wide to maybe run through. Run through, yes. And it puts you thinking. It does. What were you thinking, actually? At that moment, I was thinking who was the slowest and who was going to get caught first. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a bit like the bull in the field, isn't it? Yes. You're, you're always fine once the lad beside you is slower. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And isn't, I suppose, realistically what you are thinking, and, and it's an amazing uh, connection between the lads. While we'd have good banter and we do our every day, once we, I always say, I always have this saying, like the threshold of the fire station. Once you come in, it's different. And when you leave to go home, mm -hmm. once you cross that threshold, make sure and leave everything behind you. Um, mm -hmm. But something clicks once you have that uniform in you, you are a band of, of a team and... You do, like you start looking for options and it's not for yourself. It it's mm. always has to be a decision of, of get the team. Like mm. we, we go together, we come home together no matter what. And that's No, I <laughs> I live beside uh, uh, Michael McNamara. Yes. God be good to him. Yeah. Okay. And it, the month of February 
and March. Particularly if they were dry. Absolutely. Yeah. He uh, was very uncomfortable. Yeah. Because somehow or another, and the distant hill, and no human being around it at all, it's suddenly a blaze. Yeah, glow. A glow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Out of bed, two o'clock, three o'clock, four o'clock in the morning. No okay. yeah. How is it uh, that people, I'm not referring to who they are or anything like that, uh, how is it that they can't understand you don't light forest bushes? Yeah, I suppose to be fair, the the real genuine people will always kind of come forward. When when you're up there, they'll come to us and they'll be apologising and I was only doing this and I was only doing that and I only trimmed the hedge, you know what I mean? The, <laughs> I suppose the higher up you go, like the breeze, the, like what's, what's a breeze in the town is, is, is nearly a gale up there, you know. And <laughs> it travels, embers travel, and, and yeah. they don't realise it like this is, is just gorse, dead yeah. uh, grass from the year before, and it is like kindling, like it'll just go, yeah. and the speed it goes at then. Can uh, it fool you as well? Can it be under? Yeah. Can, can it be under the top zone? Strangely enough, the last few years we, we've dealt with that a lot more in, in that in the peat areas. Yeah. That once the dry weather comes, that the peat cracks and the fire will travel to the cracks underground. And it's a very deceptive fire and a dangerous one. Um, we had a beautiful example of it down in, in Whitegate, uh, where the old dump was. They, they, they covered that all in and they, they backfilled it and they saw trees there. And that went on fire and the, the, the old dump was burning. But it, it was, I think it went on for something like nine days and slowly but surely the peat burnt down the bottom of the trees and it gave you that whole beautiful view of the, the root and then the, and the charring of the roots and everything. And it's phenomenal, but then it gets really weak and it's very dangerous. Uh, very hard to deal with it. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I know the Americans uh, who are great to invent stuff, they have these probes that go into the ground and you flood the ground. But my own personal opinion that it doesn't work unless you hit the vein of the, the crack where the fire is. Uh, in Ireland, how they deal with it, the forestry boys will come out with machinery, will clear an area, dig a big drain, fill the drain with water, and, and let it burn into it, and that usually catches it. Catches it, yeah. Mm-hmm. A lot of your work now, and we, we've been talking about fires mainly, but, I mean, if we get a winter storm and there's trees down, it's yeah. you lads that are out. Um, car accidents... Yeah. which is obviously, uh, for most people anyway, a very harrowing um, situation. Yeah, believe it or not. Uh, and it's strange. We too yesterday. Um, luckily, nobody nobody hurt. Um, but everything seems to be changing. Like, the, the very dynamics and safety in cars has changed a lot. Again, when I joined, every crash you went to, the cutters are out, you're ripping open cars like cans, and you're bringing people out. Safety has improved, unbelievable, and even the, the method and how we bring people out now, the, the HC will come now and ask you to step out, whereas before it was, don't move. Um, because your body is your biggest indicator of injury. So if your body allows you to step out, well, then there is large probability that there isn't any serious damage. Uh, you may be sore, but spinal injury is pretty much ruled out straight away if, if you can step out. Yeah. So a lot of that, the method and, and, and what we do at uh, car crashes now has changed a lot as well. Uh, the two yesterday, like it's, it's road traffic management. Um, we've hundreds of bollards now and skippers, they call them, and we've a stop go and the debris in the road to make sure it's, it's safe afterwards and it's, it's all lighting of the area. Um, technically, and then, then the storms, then it's the same. We, we use the same equipment. Uh, we're very visible because our trucks are big, uh, big lights. Um, yeah. and we have big numbers so looking in, again in Scarif like well, while 7 is the minimum we would nearly always have 8 or 9 <laughs> and often 10 so we have a lot of guys uh, technically um, road incidents aren't under the remit of the fire service but it's a, a, a service we carry out for the road section in the council because again they have one or two guys coming in one truck and it's safety so there's Road traffic management is all about managing the road and the safety and shutting it down and fending off and making zones safe to work in. So we have mm. the equipment and the, the bodies to do there that. Must be, it must be a lot of training, Darren. It's, it's constant training. Um, again, it's quite a popular question. Um, you go to London like this and have the guys for months on end and they kind of bring them back and they have a lot of the course done. But the way the retained service works is they do an initial course. 
Uh, it's a three week course, and then they kind of come out and they they kind of get their wings, and then they add on to it. And even myself, like it's constant. Every year you'll have a new course that'll train you up into something new, and whether it's instructing on something or um, just goes along. There's driving, there's water rescue, there's medical, there's working at heights, um, winches. Uh, we did uh, abrasive wheels, which is con saws and angle grinders on the other day. There's chainsaws. There's it's just it's constant. constant it's, uh, one of the things I remember, I've had a few. <laughs> Calls of, of with the fire, the chimney fire being one, but mm. I remember down at Ducey's, and this would be now before your time, um, and there was some kind of a Christmas do down there at Christmas. I think Santa Claus may be coming yeah. by water and stuff, and, and there was a tent there, uh, kind of a gazebo, and the helicopter was out up from Shannon, and the helicopter was hovering overhead. And suddenly the gazebo <laughs> took off and, and blew right across the whole area down there. Yeah. And no, it was grand. There was nobody hurt or anything. But what I noticed that day was as soon as this happened, a group of lads took off immediately. And there were all the fire service. The fire service were there, I think, just to let young fellows sit into the fire engine. That yeah. was their role. Um, but suddenly, as soon as this happened, it was so fast the lads took off straight away, grabbed onto the thing, just to make sure everything was... But it was the kind of instant automatic reaction uh, of the fire personnel that, that I was full of admiration for. Yeah, and that's not something you can train in someone, really. You know what I mean? I suppose they go through an interview process and that that's probably someone's qualities like that is picked up in the interview mm. process. Like they, They're good with their hands, uh, they're good to react good at heights, things like that. And so the fire service is an unusual service in that it's, it's while we're full-time contracted, it's a part-time job. Yeah. And I suppose a lot of people don't understand that, like, you go through the 10 of the crew up there, like, I'm in the kitchen at home, alert goes off, and you're in a totally different mode. And it depends then on the printout, what's on it. And once you see persons reported again, you're in a different mode again, and it's the speed. So, for the East Clare area, and I'm talking from the Grand Gate and Gort, mm -hmm. down to Tuis and Coos, over to all up from all the back of Fecal, all the way down into Tulla, and back down halfway down Agunlo. There's 10 guys that will respond. We have the fastest response time in, in Clare, Scarf, um, 3.4 minutes or something mm -hmm. to get our first crew out, which Very is good. It is good, to be fair, uh, to be right up there in, in the country that you have minimum seven guys in three and a half minutes mm -hmm. to respond to, and it can be anything. <laughs> Darren, with the change in architectural uh, uh, design of houses mm -hmm. and the chimneys disappearing, that removes one source of uh, concern to you, doesn't it? It does. It? it does. Um, I suppose it's a strange one. Like I said at the very start, uh, chimney fires were... were probably our most prominent or yeah. busiest uh, call in number wise and then um, it changed in the around 0809 at the end of the crash there people started putting in stoves and any stove that's put in correctly it pretty much eliminates it um, but then of course you had a lot of stoves that weren't put in which actually made the situation worse for us really yeah, because I suppose they were coming in, they were capping the chimney on top and they were capping it in the bottom and they put a bit of a flue in the bottom and a bit of a flue in the top and you still had your old chimney in there and now you have a chimney fire in there and now we can't get to it. So that, <laughs> That's, that beautiful yeah. new paint job in the sitting room just above the fireplace was, <laughs> yes. was tested a few times <laughs> with a Kango hammer. Um, yeah, it did, but even my own house, I suppose, bringing it back, uh, I couldn't get planned for a chimney. Um, you couldn't? Was, no. It's a reality. Yeah, it is a reality. Yeah, I asked. Um, I didn't get a, a full stop, no. Yeah. But uh, I was certainly deflected from it. Mm -hmm. um, it. I suppose if I pushed it, I might have got it. Mm -hmm. But um, it, it was, it was a, one of the things that we had discussed briefly, and I just got the opinion that it was... It Going was back to the, to, the, uh, to the safety factor... Mm. Um, have you anything to say to car drivers with regard to 
uh, having certain equipment in the boot of the car. Yeah, I suppose the biggest, you know, I mean, you can go down on a, like a small first aid bag or yeah. you can go down on a, but the biggest one is a triangle. Yes. Um, I don't know why, but unfortunately you'll find the majority of times you're going to break down. It's just dusk in the evening, you're on yeah. the way home from work. Yeah. And that triangle, roads are going to be easier, cars are faster, um, there's a lot more happening. So if you can an do anything to warn somebody coming, yes, that's the best thing. Yes. And genuinely stay off the road yourself. And stay off it, yeah. Just stay off the road. Get into High it. vis, do you sometimes wonder, <coughs> how is it that road users don't always pay attention to... It's just uh, funny you say that. Losing high vis. Yeah, I was... Um, read it somewhere or came up somewhere. I think that's law somewhere. Yeah. I don't know, is it in, in Switzerland or somewhere that it's law that you have to have your pack with your high... Or is it Germany or somewhere? And France. Is it France? Yeah. That you have to have it in it. And I think it's quite a good idea. Visibility yeah. is the big one. Yeah. If, if you're visible, you have yeah. a lot of the... A lot of the thing done, yeah. Listen, we we have a few other uh, younger people to have a <laughs> chat with, Darren. Very good. Listen, many thanks for coming no, in. No problem. And I mean, I, I think it's good that people would know, uh, you yeah. know, about the fire service and about the ins and outs of it as well. Yeah. And and you know, for f to hear what what you do and the various things. Have you went to have you something else? Chris? No, no, not really. No, just listen. Thanks a million, and just I suppose for everyone, just know we're there. Right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Don't and and, and, and hope that we don't bad. need you. Ah, yeah, yeah. That, that's the big thing, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks a million. Okay, okay. Dan McNamara, station manager here in Scarif Fire Station. Many thanks for joining us. Thank you.